Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And you might be thinking to yourself, hey Austin, why are you laying in that unflattering pose underneath the vehicle? Are you hurt? Are you injured? Are you hiding from the police or your wife, which are one and the same? No, the answer is actually pretty simple. We're gonna build some side steps, some running boards for the side of this Chevy here. So let's get into it. Let me grab you guys, give y'all a closer look. There's several of these right here, here, down there and there. We want, I want four contact points on this running board that I'm gonna be putting on. And that's how we're gonna anchor them is to those points here. We're gonna have to get some aftermarket clips that have, that come in through this back hole that will thread on. So that's something to look at while we pull measurements about how high this is up to that, you know, how deep this is back, how long this is, what's the drop right here, all these things to consider when I'm pulling all my measurements for this bit. We also wanna get the length, total length, and I'm gonna go from fender well all the way back to fender well. I'm gonna even go a little bit extendo compared to just the passenger. That way I can even kind of put a little bit of a steppy step to the back of the truck. I've never really worked with tubing. I've done enough pipe fitting and enough pipe welding to know round stuff pretty okay but I've never bent tubing. I've never had to notch it and build something like this. So I'm really excited. One of my favorite things to do is something new. We've already got our parts list cut out, drawn out. I've used Fusion 360 to kind of give what I want. And I don't use Fusion probably the way you should. There is a 3D version of it that I still haven't comprehended, but I'm using it in the 2D view, drawing the center lines of all my tubing and as well as the outside walls to know exactly where the tubing is. And that'll give me some links and this helps me also gather the bins that I want. I know what degree bins I've got on here just by drawing it. I don't have to do any math. It's not probably the right way, but it's gonna be the easiest way for me to get these angles without just kind of playing it by ear and having some sort of an idea. So we use Fusion to kind of get these. I can zoom in, pull lines, get measurements and stuff like that. So that's what helped me get my parts list or my cut list together. We're gonna to be using some two inch tubing for the main headers that are gonna be uh, welded to the brackets to the truck as well as inch and a half tubing for all the step pieces and as well as some 14 gauge sheet metal for some CNC custom parts and some 3 16 plate for those brackets. So again, I'm gonna have all this stuff as far as the blueprint, the DXF files, the CAD stuff, and the bill of materials uh, in, in the weld app in the resources for you to download. So you'll be able to build one of these whenever we're completely done and have a guide on how I went about building it or do it your way you wanna build it. There's no real wrong way. Well, we called our local metal supply, the Welding General. He's got everything I ever need. They're always really timely about it. Let's run up there and go check out Metal General and grab our tubing and some sheet and plate. I should have put a little bit more effort into tying down this here bit of tubing. It's a little, a little floppy. All right, let that be a soft lesson learned. Before we go and get bend crazy, we gotta do a little bit of bending math, which unfortunately when I was designing the entire thing, I didn't even bother to do. Like I showed you in my design, I'm putting everything together center to center. And that's just how I've always done as far as tubing and fitting. But there are pipe fitting things just as there are tube bending things to consider. And that's, you know, pressure die, how much is your takeoff of how much material are you actually spending in that bend? And, and this, this bender in particular is actually pretty handy. So we're using a six uh, center line radius, a six inch center line radius bending die, two inch for the two inch tubing for the header. And it is 0 0.105 inches every single degree. So that added up to the degree that you're trying to find being this first bend that we'll put in is 15 degrees. So you do 15 times 0 0.105, and then you'll get the amount of material that you're gonna need for that bend. And that's what you should be considering when putting a list together of bill of materials. I had an eight foot piece for this two inch tubing and I didn't account for this inch and some change when I go to bend this. Now I'm gonna be an inch and some change short. Same thing with the other bin. Now that bin's not gonna be where I wanted in the first place or I'm just gonna be shorter. So now we get to wing it, my style. The other thing we gotta consider is the offset. From this block, it gives us a six inch. So from this block to the start of our bin will be where that bend starts. And then that's where you start counting those inches and that's where that bend will finish. Now we know more about the bender. Let's go lay out the tubing. I've drawn a kind of a diagram. This is the die. This is the, the block that holds the tubing. And right there from the end of the block to the center of that die is where that bend will start, okay? And that's six inches because we've got that off the machine. 
So six inches for that bend to start. And we're using this certain six inch centerline radius, which each degree is gonna be 0 0.105. So our 15 degree bend is going to be times 0 0.105 equals 1.57 or one and nine sixteenths per bend. So from the start of this bend, one and nine sixteenths back will be the entire bend. That's what you have to compensate for. I didn't do this, so my measurements are gonna be a little bit different than what we started with. That's no longer gonna be six inches from the end to the center because I didn't compensate for this. I only, I started with the center line instead of the full bend length. I'm short that half of 13 sixteenths, which is fine, still gonna fit. We just gotta adjust. To give you a better representation on the end of a piece of tubing, this block is gonna sit flush with this tubing here. So the end of the block face coming back We'll start that bend right here at six inches. Now this is the center of that bend and this is the end of that bend. Now if we take a measurement, this on my drawing was supposed to be six inches to the center, but I'm, I'm almost to seven, right? Which is that nine sixteenths ish difference that I didn't compensate for. And that's because I didn't count for this whole bend. And then I would have had that six inches to where I wanted it. We were able to do that down here on this end to get the 10 degree. So let's go ahead and bend some tubing. Make sure you don't put your little fingers where your pinchy points are at. Feed it all the way in. Cause our first bend is just gonna go ahead and make it easy and start right there on the end. So let's make sure that this block is flush with this pipe and then we can get this first bend started. And then we'll go over to the other end, line it up, give it that 10 degree. This one's gonna be a 15 and then we'll have that header built right. Now the one thing that we've got to make sure we do is make sure that these bins are both facing the same way. So what we'll end up doing is putting an angle finder or a centering head right here on the top side of the pipe to locate that zero or make sure that we don't have any roll in these bins so that something's funky or looks cattywampus. Let's talk about preloading and spring bracket. This is our first bin right on the end of the pipe and preload is whenever that tubing is whatever bender you got is locked in place. It's going to start bending right now. So that's whenever you know Right when you get that preload where it's locked into place, you can set your spring here, your indicator for zero degrees because now we're set right on zero. We wanna make sure our roll is right. We're gonna go ahead and put a 15 degree bend in this first bit. So we can go ahead and hammer down on it till we get down to 15. All right, so we're right on the money with this 15 degrees here, but now we gotta talk about spring back. This material's got some form of elastic deformation where it is gonna spring back in a little bit. So it's not gonna be a true 15 degrees unless we account for that. So what we'll do is we'll loosen the tincture on this bender, find out what it's springing back to, and then account for that. She bumped back about three degrees, so we know we need to go three degrees past this 15 in order to get it. And that's your spring back. Now our first bend is made, and I wanna make sure that this bend back here is in line with this bend right here, and they're not any kind of cattywampus. So we're gonna take this centering head here, find level, on this tubing while it's already in the bin, loaded up, no tension released, we'll go ahead and give her a mark. Normally I might use some form of, uh, you know, punch it, but I don't want to damage any of the tubing. So we can mark it just the same, double check, make sure it's level and we're good to go. We flip this thing around and make this other bin on this other side. So let's take another look at these mad science plans. Again, these only really make sense to me if I were to look at it, because I'm so unorganized, but I know where everything's at. We're trying to make this piece here. So we got this long piece, or this one leg, a bend. We got a 50 degree bend here, 50 degree bend here, and we're back up. So what we're gonna do is we gotta find the cut length for that. And what we went ahead and did is kind of drew everything out. Now, I designed this not knowing what my machine was capable of. So five and a quarter is the amount of offset that this is inch and a half tubing is gonna have inside this machine with a 0 0.079 degrees per degree is gonna be what, how, many, how many inches this takes up. So we're doing a 50 degree bend in each one of these corners, that being 0 0.079 times 50. So for each bend, you roughly get four inches or three and 15 sixteenths. If you divide that by half, you get two, right? So for each one of these legs, if I have a five and a quarter of offset from the face of my block, 
that means I, from the start of that block to the start of the bend, I'll have five and a quarter inches plus that two inch because of the half of the full degree here. So that gives me seven and a quarter. Now that was an inch and some change more than what I wanted. I wanted this eventually to be six inches to the center, which means it's fine. We can trim this bit up, but for what we need to do right now, if we take all that into consideration where we have four inches of steel for each bend, five and a quarter from the start of it to the center line, and again, 22 inches here, we'll get 36 and a half for the total cut length for this one piece with the two bends. So now we can, we can cut, lay out, bend, and get it to where we need to do it and do this twice. Yeah, uh, come here. Yeah. Whew, there we go. There we have it. We have our two bins right there. 50 degrees on each side. Let's go see how it looks on the header. Okay, so far this is looking, this is this is what we're, we're trying to do. This is actually gonna line up closer to somewhere over here. This will be the driver's side step. Now, this is, I wanted it to be like six and a half in this is supposed to be way closer we were supposed to be closer into you know five and a half to the center was where i was planning on which is going to be fine because that means that we're going to be able to cut down and notch these ends to fit what we want so it's great for rookies like me to do stuff like this uh the biggest thing that i wanted to check with this bin is to make sure there's no there's no rock in it so we're good there it's just like a teeny bit of a roll problem but you know that's something that I'm happy with for a beginner, right? And we want to make sure that that's square. So center to center of this tubing, we got seven and a half. You know, we got seven and a half, pretty much seven and a half all the way across. So we know that this is square, the bends are good. There's that little wiggle, and that's just for me, more or less eyeballing that roll, which I gotta quit that. My eyeballs, trust my eyeballs, way too much. Now we just gotta make one more of these and then a longer one for the back. The best part about this whole thing with these plans that we've done, we're making this piece right now and we're gonna add these little bit of braces later. Those are gonna be random. This one's gonna be a little bit longer, but this piece is 20 inches of play. So what we got right here is fine. We can make this one so much longer and still be able to have some play with this. Now we're, we're pretty much scrapped this plan and we're just winging it and making up a new plan as we go because this is a prototype. I'm new at this, don't hate me but it's gonna look super mint, bro. We got one of the steps done, so now we gotta do the other three. We're gonna do the exact same thing we did to this one, just three more times. So we're just gonna... Oh, I thought I was gonna genie wish that to work. Some of y'all are gonna get that reference, but for everyone else, let's just cut and bend. We definitely learned a lot about tube bending and fabrication. Again, I've never done this stuff before, so this is all new to me, and I do think this is a pretty great beginner's project for anyone trying to get into tube fabrication, being that everything's just kind of two-dimensional. Now, the original plans that we had, we had to toss those out the window. 
I had the shop goblins come in last night. Those guys are pros. They pulled all the measurements that we need, the real measurements, and gave me a cut list today with the bins in it. And again, I'm gonna provide this cut list and everything at the end of this video. This video has been pretty long already with the bending. We still gotta cope, we still gotta fit, we still gotta CNC cut some brackets and some other artistic -y bits, and then we gotta mount it to the truck. So we still got a lot to do. So this is probably gonna be a three-part video. If you wanna watch the whole video, it's in the Weld app already, already pieced together. You can go check it out over there. It's got all the resources of everything that we used in this video, including the cut list, the materials that we used, the DXF files, and the blueprint for the entire build so that you can build this thing yourself. And after the goblins put one together, they said, hey man, you can actually do a lot of different designs with just the pieces that we have here. So you can even make it different than this with that same cut list. That being said, tune in next week where we go to cope and fit this tubing. Take it easy, guys.